Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight. In the previous theory-based episode, we took a look at how we can use a relay to control a higher-powered device, and how to use a transistor to drive that relay. If our control circuitry, uh, like an Arduino Nano or maybe even Raspberry Pi, doesn't have enough current capability to turn that relay on. In this episode, we're going to take that theory and put it into an application. Now, Element 14 sent me this cool retro patch which I thought would be fun to turn into an actual sign. So I had this circuit board manufactured. It's actually a large PCB that consumed a, an entire panel. What we're gonna do is have the relays and driver circuitry up here, then we're going old school. We're gonna use a 555 timer down here and a CD4017 to drive all of this stuff. What's it driving? We're gonna install a bunch of lamps around the outside and we'll have kind of like a sequencer circuit so that the lamps blink on and off. Cool, old school technology. I think it'll be fun to put on the wall back there. So anyway, let's get started. Cue that surf music. The first step is that we're going to start installing some components one block at a time. The first of which will be the voltage regulator portion of the circuit. I've got a DC to DC converter here that goes from 12 volts to five, and we'll make sure that that's actually occurring at the proper voltage. Okay. Once that's complete, we'll move on to the 555 timer and we'll double check the waveform and make sure that the timing is good on that. I think I want to cycle all of these outside bulbs at like one second, maybe a little bit longer. Once that's complete, we'll install the CD4017 and make sure that we have the proper sequence coming from that. And if we uh, are successful there, we will move on to installing the relays and the driver circuitry. Okay, the transistors, the bias resistor, and the protection diodes. As far as the mounting of the lamps, I have a six volt lamp here that will mount to the rear of the circuit board and then we'll install our rivet and use our rivet gun to pop the uh, little nugget there. All right, let's take a quick look at the schematic. So the heart of our circuit is the 555 timer IC, which we see here that provides a pulse signal to the CD4017, which is uh, a counter. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Then we have a power supply here that is, uh, takes 12 volts in and regulates that down to five volts. The five volts supplies both the 555 and the CD4017. To the top left, we have uh, all three strings of our lamps that connect to the relays. Every other third lamp um, is in a sequence and these are all intermingled between each other. So they operate sequentially when we uh, excite one string and then the other, then the other. Um, it looks like a sequential pattern. The voltage that goes to the lamps is selected by this voltage select header. Okay, so we can put a jumper here between pins two and three to select five volts for the lamps and between 12 and the lamp supply pin here. Okay, so the reason for that is I don't know if the five volts uh, regulator has enough current capability to drive all the LEDs. We'll just have to test that out. I have three relay circuits here that are driven by a transistor, which offers some current gain. So the CD4017 uh, can drive all of those lamps. So let's look at the calculations for uh, how to set up the resistor and the transistor uh, to provide enough current to turn this uh, relay on and off. This particular relay is a G5Q1A4DC12. So the coil operates at 12 volts DC. It has a coil resistance from the data sheet of 720 ohms. So in this case, we're using a 2N3904 transistor, which has a beta that ranges from 100 to 300. Beta or HFE in the data sheet as it's known is the current amplifying capability of the transistor. So if we put a certain amount of current here, it is multiplied through the collector emitter by a factor of 100 to 300. The calculations that I'm doing, you'll see I'm using 75, which you know gives me a little margin of error, which will drive the transistor a little further into saturation, making sure that it's powered on. Uh, so we calculate the amount of current that the coil is going to consume using Ohm's law, 12 volts divided by 720 ohms is equal to 17 milliamps. Now I want to calculate the amount of base current that I need to make sure that I have enough current drive capability and I'm putting that transistor into saturation, meaning fully on. So the current uh, through my coil divided by the transistor's beta or HFE is equal to 17 milliamps divided by 75, which gives me 227 microamps. From there, I want to calculate the resistor value. So I take the voltage at the base, which is five volts coming from the CD4017. I subtract my voltage base emitter drop, which remember this is a diode here from base to emitter. So we lose 0.7 volts there. Uh, so that's five volts minus 0.7 
divided by the 227 microamps of base current that we need, and we end up with a resistor of 19K. Now 19K is not a standard value, so we're gonna use 18K, which will push us a little further into saturation, which is perfectly fine. And just like we mentioned in the previous video, we need a flyback or freewheeling diode to protect our transistor from voltage transients when this coil is turned off because there'll be a voltage spike. So the way this thing works, we have this set up to provide a pulse on this clock pin every you know, one or two seconds, depending on our resistor and capacitor time constant here. And that's calculated by this formula right here. I'm not gonna go through this because this video is not about 555s. That clock pin is connected to the CD4017. Now what this thing does is it turns one output on sequentially. So relay one will be on at the next clock pulse, the next one will turn on so on and so forth, until we hit normal or skip. These pins are connected through a jumper back to the reset pin, so it recycles, okay? So I can either recycle on every fourth pulse or I can recycle on every fifth pulse. And what that will do will turn all lamps off if I use the skip pin. So let's look at that jumper here. So the reset pin that goes to the CD4017, I can connect between pins two and three to skip a beat, or I can go to the normal pin so it continuously recycles uh, through pins one, two, and three. Now the output of each of these relay signals is connected to the base of the transistors, which provide that five volts to turn each individual relay on and off. And that is essentially how it works. Here we are, moment of truth. Everything's hooked up, the bulbs are all in, everything is soldered to the rear of the board here. I did make a couple of mistakes with the wiring, so I had to run these off to the side. Oops. Let's see if it works off of 12 volts. Lamp's running off of five volts. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> that's not right. Uh, okay, so it seems like the bulbs are staying in there reset position i think this is the first initial uh sequence for the cd4017 so i can hear the relays clicking not really sure which one i suspect that this guy's not able to supply enough current uh to the lamps and the ic's so let me switch to the 12 volt side i don't want to run this at 12 volts because it could burn out the lamps these are only six volt lamps um so i'll Put the voltage higher than what the voltage regulator needs, but lower than uh, what's burning out the lamp. So maybe like eight volts. So let's give that a shot. Okay, let's turn this on. Ah, there we go. So I think the problem is the fact that this guy can't supply enough current. Let's look at it on the scope just to be sure, but that's pretty awesome that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, let's just look at the waveform really quick. All right, so we're back on five volts and we can see the lamps are not changing state. If we look at the waveform on the scope, you can see there are multiple pulses there. If we hold it and zoom in, we have one, two, three rising edges. So that's why the bulbs are not changing state. The uh, CD4017 is probably cycling through that really quickly which is why we hear those multiple clicks. All right, so I've got my scope probe right across the output capacitor of that voltage regulator, and I've triggered the waveform. So you can see here, there are actually multiple pulses. So we're drawing too much current. And the reason I think that is, is that the lamp, when it's cold, when you first turn it on, there's a low resistance and a really high current demand. And we're drawing three quarters of an amp just with the lamps on themselves. So when they're in a cold state, we're drawing even more than that. 
and the regulator can only provide one amp worth of current. So that's the output of our voltage regulator. So we'll switch this back over. We'll crank up the voltage a little bit. And there you have it. All right, well that wraps up this episode on how to drive a relay. We turned this little patch into this sign over here on this PCB. It's working out pretty good. There were some issues with the circuitry, um, kind of things that I kind of foresaw, but we're able to work around. Uh, but anyway, we saw how you could take a TTL logic level device or a microcontroller and drive a relay from it and control a high power device. That in conjunction with the previous episode, there was a little bit more theory. Uh, this was more of a practical approach and shows you how to actually do it. So anyway, this is how I learned how to do it back in the late 1800s, back when I was in college. Uh, the way that you do it might vary a little bit. So hey, let me know down in the comments or engage with us uh, at element14.com within the Element 14 community. Links are all down below. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.